Alrighty, welcome back to Ben Buckler Boards. So I've been riding my Super 73 SG1 into work on a daily basis and I've noticed my brake, my rear brake has come in, it's a bit loose, it's touching the handlebar here. Here's my other hand here, see that? That is not great because you don't get a huge amount of braking uh, capability. It should be like this, where it comes in and stops right about there. So you can really squeeze that hard when you need to. This happens to a few customers and what I wanted to do is quickly run you through what you should look for and how you can fix it yourself. Uh, so this is when we call over Omar, our support guy, and legend sales person. Hi there. <laughs> All right, so Omar, what are the things we should look for when our brake is behaving like this? What should we do? Okay, so I think uh, we should just go down to the wheel and just make sure that there, um, there are no leaks from the actual um, lines here. Um, from the hydraulic. So I guess I might point out, um, sorry to interrupt, Omar. I'll just point out that on the SG1, they're hydraulic brakes. So with hydraulic brakes, it's all a fixed unit. Um, there's hydraulic fluid in here, in a reservoir, and it's all um, sealed tight. So what Omar is saying is look for any leakage that may be causing the brakes to sag. Yep. Yeah, so just go down to the um, disc, just make sure it's all dry and there's no oil there, and then work your way up. Just make sure there is no oil leaks all the way through. And then come up to the actual reservoir and just make sure also the um, the, the, uh, the connection is connections solid. are all yeah. solid and um, no oil. Um, so then, that'll look good and safe then? Yep, yep. everything looks all right. Um, now the other thing that you might look, we'll, we'll check a bit later, would be the actual pads. Um, so we'll probably change those pads just to make sure. Um, and then the last bit um, is the grommet screw here. So the grommet screw is sticking out uh, a little bit more than usual. It should be flush, um, um, and it isn't at the moment, hence why this is, I think, pulling back compared to this side, um, where it's quite flush and it stops. So what we'll do is we'll just get a two and a half millimeter Allen key and then um, wind that back. All right, so I'm just going to show us how to do that. So essentially, it's three things to look for. One is uh, fluid leakage. Second of all is brake pads. But um, what Omar's identified here is the Allen key right there. So we're going to fix that. So we'll just get a small Allen key, stick it in there. I can see. I can't. All right, hold on a second. It's a bit big. It's a bit big. Hold on a second. Choosing the right tool is also important. Let me rephrase that. Two mil Allen key. <laughs> so stick it in there and just wind that back. All right, so that's now flush with the um, handle and it should stop the brake going all the way back. You could screw this all the way in further if you'd like, which makes the brake even harder, uh, but it'll be far away, it'll be further away from your hands. So um, at the end of the day, it's really what you prefer. Yeah, so if you were to, if you were saying if you were to push that uh, grommet screen further, the brake lever would come out further. Correct. And that might be nice if you got massive hands, big banana hands. Yeah. Um, but for me, this feels about right. Ideally, you want them the the, the brake uh, lever out at a similar place to the other one on the other side. Correct. Yes. So that your hands are comfortable. No, no, that should be good. So that feels good, and. What we might do for this video is show you how to change the brake pads. It's unlikely we need to do it in this instance because we've fixed, it, fixed the brakes there. And we're, I'm also not hearing any metallic, metallic scraping noise and I'm still able to stop effectively with the rear brakes. But we'll just do it for this video and show you how to change the brake pads. Alrighty, so these are what brake pads look like. This is how they look new. So we will take out the ones that are in our bike and see what they look like. Yeah, as you can see that the bottom there is a bit thinner than up here. Can you see that? So eventually this will need changing soon. Yeah, but to me that looks pretty good. There's still plenty of uh, brake pad on there. So uh, I'd, I'd be inclined to leave that one as is. Um, maybe we'll do another video later. <laughs>
<laughs> Are we being lazy right now? Oh, it shouldn't take that much to do it. Let's just do it so we can show people how to do it. All right. That's it. The little trick is before you pull the um, pads out, before you take it out, just make sure that you push the pistons back. So when you put in the new one, it will be easier. And at this point, don't squeeze the brake lever, otherwise the pistons will come out and be a problem to get back in. Okay, so that's our old ones, which you know you could probably still do a few hundred kilometers on them. Yeah, so they're, they're good. We'll probably even put those back in, but for the sake of showing you how to swap brake pads, we'll just swap out. And when you are putting new brake pads in, it's useful to put in this new wishbone thing, the spring. I don't know, there's probably a better technical term for it. Do you know what that is, Emma? It's like a little bracket, I guess. Okay. Alright, so line it up like that, both sides, squeeze it, grab the brakes, slip it in, it can be a little bit fiddly, so you just need to be patient. have a bit of patience and take your time. And have the right angle, which I didn't have the right angle. <laughs> All right, so they're in. And you go back up to the top, and then you just put in the bolt in again. And you put it back in. Make sure it's tight. There we go. So that's back in, back in, and then we we'll just squeeze it back in here. That was a little bit tight going in because of the new um, pads. These bolts back in, but uh, you did a pretty good job there, Amo. There was you left some gap in there between the brake pads for the disc to go in. Yep. If uh, you don't have that sufficient gap in there, what is useful um, is to use a screwdriver from the back from from the back to uh, put some space in there for putting, for putting it over the disc. time before you tighten everything I would um, grab oh, the brakes. Lift the rear wheel up a bit. Oh yes. Just, oh, grab, no, just want oh. to grab the brakes. Oh yeah. So grab the brakes. So it squeezes. So and the then brakes squeeze onto the, the disc at that point and then it's, it's telling um, Omo where it's should, comfortable to screw in. Yeah it should be centered when you yeah. do that. Okay. I'll let go. Nice and tight. Yep. I'll let go now. And then if I lift up the rear wheel I lift up the rear wheel. I should be able to spin it, and there should be no noise. Yep, and it breaks perfectly. And you notice that there's no um, metallic scraping noise at this point because the brakes are centered. So that's perfect. If there is some metallic braking noise, just um, loosen these again and resit them, and then Tighten. apply the brakes again and just keep uh, retightening um, to, to get that up, to get that working. Okay. So. Nice work, Omar. Thanks very much. Let us know if you have any questions in the comments and we'll try to improve and um, add some information for you to help you out. And uh, stay tuned for other videos where we do some more of this stuff. All right, thanks a lot. Bye now.